Hey folks, Wes Boss here. So I just tweeted this thing about, I was on a website and like uh, I had to enter a code. It got texted to me. I copied it from the text message. I pasted it into here and it just pasted the first letter. And I had to like type it like a sucker. Um, and I thought like, come on. So I tweeted it. Everybody liked it. And I thought, stop complaining, go and build it. Show people how to do it. Cause like, that's what my whole JavaScript 30 course is sort of based upon is building little UI things like this. So. Let's do it. Um, I've got an index.html up and running here, um, which just has a form with the class of verify. I've got all of our inputs. I've limited them to one, one uh, character each. And then I have input verify. I've got some base CSS in there. And then I have an empty JavaScript file. I am running it right here. Um, I just typed parcel index HTML and it just gives me hot reloading. Uh, all right, so let's, let's, let's do it. Um, first thing we need to do, or maybe let's talk about like how it's going to work. The first thing we need to do is when you type into one of these boxes, it should um, notice that event and then automatically focus the next one. So that's the first part. And then the second one is when I take something like one, two, three, four, five, six, and I paste that in here, it should paste one, two, three, four, five, six into each of them. So let's tackle both of those things. So const the form is equal to uh, document dot query selector. And I believe the input has a name of verify. Okay. And then I'll say const inputs is equal to form dot query selector all. And then we grab, we just want these. And we could say like where the name starts with N, but I have wrapped them in a class of inputs. So I will say an input that lives in that div with the class of input. Okay. Um, now, next, what we need to do is listen for uh, an event on each of these so that when you focus one, um, it will go up and focus the next one. So uh, we could loop over each of these inputs and attach an event listener to each of them. However, we can also listen for the input event um, just right up on our form. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So say form .add event listener, and we're going to listen for the input event. And then we'll just say handle input. We'll make a function called handle input. That will take the event. And when that happens, we'll just console log the event. And let's just make sure that works. Open up my dev tools here. And if I type into it, there we go. See how it's it's doing it on every single input. All, so if you listen at a form, that's called event delegation. The way you can tell the difference between uh, the form and the input itself is you can say event.target and event.current target. And that will show you the difference between those. So here we go. The target is the actual input itself, whereas the current target is the, the thing that you listened for the click on, which is the form. Okay, so uh, what we need to do here is we will uh, check for data that was inputted. And if there is a next input, focus it. Okay. So we'll make a little variable const input is equal to uh, event dot, what did we want? Current target or, or target? I believe it's dot target. Um, and then we'll say uh, input, let's console log it, console log, Input dot next element sibling. And that will give us a sibling if it has one. So if I put an input of right here, it gives me the next two. And if I do it on the last one, it gives us null. So what we can do here is we'll say, um, if there is a next element sibling and there is a uh, text, because this will also trigger if you backspace it, and how annoying would that be is if you backspace it and automatically focus the next one. So we check if there is a next sibling and there's text in it, like you actually type something, then we'll take it and we'll just call focus on that. So now if I type into one of them, it will automatically do it. Um, another thing you could do is you could, um, like if I type here, it could select it. So you could type it again. Uh, I, I'm not going to cover that. Maybe that's something you could go off and do yourself. Um, the next thing is we need to handle the paste event. Uh, when you paste in the first one, we need to take each subsequent character that is pasted in and populate the next input. 
Um, so what we'll do is we'll take the first inputs and we will listen for the paste event. And when that happens, we will run a handle paste. We'll have a function called handle paste and we'll have the event. And the way that you can get paste data is with the clipboard API. Um, you can also, you probably could also have listen for an input. Um, and there's a new, on the input event, there's this new property called data. Um, and that would also give you, if they pasted more than five characters or if something else put more data in this first one, it would know and it would give you the whole string instead of just the, the first character because we're limiting it via, uh, via HTML here. Uh, but the paste is probably most likely, so let's go with that. Um, we will say const uh, paste is equal to, we'll take the event, we'll take the clipboard data, and then there's a method on it called get data, and we pass it text, because you could also paste files and stuff like that, but in our case, we just want that. So clipboard data, um, and let's just console.log, the paste, what we, what we paste. Um, so I'm just going to need some stuff here. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll just do a random one. So if we go in here and paste, boom, uh, that didn't work. Let me give it a refresh. There we go. Uh, that, see, it's giving us the whole pasted data. And in our case, it's just focusing the next one. So what we need to do here is loop over each input and populate with the index of that string. So we'll take our inputs and we'll call for each of the input. Actually, we need the, both the input and the index. Um, and then here we'll just say uh, input dot value is equal to the paste square bracket I and what that will do is uh, if we paste a string of six characters and you're on the fourth input, it should put four right in there. Um, there's a little bit more we'll, I think we'll need to do in case you someone paste something that's not totally right, but let's try it. So I'm gonna take my 938 number, go in the first one, paste, boom, nine, three, that didn't work. Okay, uh, give it a refresh, try it again, boom, Nine, three, no, no, not working. Okay, so let's debug it here. Um, let's console.log the input. And then put that there. So when somebody pastes in there, good, we get our one through six. So that's working. Uh, and then we give it the input paste of i. That should work. It should work. Let's try again. One, two, three. Oh, it was working. You know what? Um, the hot reloading sometimes doesn't work perfectly with vanilla JavaScript because it's not set up for unbinding and all that. So sometimes I just need to give it a refresh. So that seems to work just great. Um, the only other thing is if somebody, for some reason, pastes in something that's not as long, you see we get undefined that's put into here um, and we don't want that so what we'll do is we'll say input that value is pace of i or an empty string there we go uh, it just clears those out and shows the user that um, it doesn't have it okay so that's that um what can you do to to practice it a little bit more um one uh select the text when the next input is focused. So like right now, if I were to take this long one right here and then I said, oh, that's wrong. I, I got a new code um, and I start to type it by hand. If I push two here and automatically focuses this, wouldn't it be nice if it automatically selected that three for us or highlighted that three, that would be a good one. Um, and then two, the other kind of cool thing I, th I thought would be is um, if you paste in a code that is the same length, like boom, like it does that, then it would be cool for it to either focus the verify button or maybe even just submit the form altogether. 
Um, I know Stripe does that is if you have your code here, you paste it, it will say, oh, okay, I got them all filled. Go ahead and, and verify it. So it's all just one quick step. So um, auto submit the form if all fields are filled after a paste. So um, I hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll put the link in the description below. I'll just pop, I'll pop it in a GitHub repo so you can fork it um, and try to add those things yourself. See ya.